Hello, my name is Richard Halter, and I started working in retail technology over 20 years ago. And I've worked with over 1,500 subject matter experts in all areas of retail. <clears throat> and as a result, I've created this new model, IVROM. It's an interactive, virtual, unified retail model. And this will give you an overview, a very, very high level overview of what's in the model. Oh my God, who'd ever think retail is this complicated? This is a model of the systems in retail and their interconnections. It is one of the foundations of the IVRAM model. If you click on any of the icons, you will drill down to the areas that relate to that icon. You'll see more of these relationships later. This model starts with the virtualization of the enterprise. One tailors this model to their unique business. One then can then focus their efforts around what they are trying to accomplish. In the assessment area, you can identify the applications and their information related to what you are trying to accomplish. You can then model and plan for your upgrades to that particular area. We're going to use this future buy online pickup in the store example to show how to use this model. This example starts with an IoT device, in this case a refrigerator in your home, that has found out that you're low on eggs. So it adds eggs to your shopping list. When you're ready, you have the shopping list sent to the store. The store receives it and they have to develop a path for the robot to go pick up these eggs. That path is dependent on what item is in inventory, what's the store layout, what's the customer preferences, which kind of eggs do they like to buy. Once that path is built, it's sent to the robot and it drives around picking those items and puts them in the cart. When it has what your shopping list wants, it then moves to being paid for the items. At that time, the payment moves to the payment processing system, which sends money to the bank or gets authorization from the bank. And it splits off the, the sales and use tax to be sent off to the treasury. The items once paid for, you have to figure out how to deliver them, how the customer wants them delivered. So you either send the package to a drone for delivery with a drone, or you drive, you split them off and send them to a self-driving automobile, in which case you've got to know where it is. If the customer has a self-driving auto, it comes and gets parked somewhere in the parking lot, you've got to find it to put the items in. It then either gets delivered to the home through this self-driving automobile, or through a drone, delivery, a drone delivery automobile. Now let's take a look under the cover. When you merge the processes with the system, you can see that a lot of systems have to coordinate to be successful. Do those applications properly link together? It is a complicated task to make sure each system is properly connected to execute that process. With this effort, you've identified an area in the red that is not currently covered by your business model. And now the scary part. This is the domain model for pause lot retail transaction. As you can see, there's an enormous amount of information embedded in this model. IVROM is a multi-dimensional retail model that starts with the business strategy. It links that to the value streams necessary to focus that strategy to the processes, people, and information to make it successful. It then provides a link to the business intelligence required to monitor and maintain the focus on that strategy. So now we get to explore the model I've created to accomplish that closed loop system. These are the major top level areas in the interactive virtual retail model. We will cover each one separately. Now we will look under the covers of the IVROM model. Every business starts with a business strategy. That strategy is in the top area of the model. In this case, one of the questions you want to ask management is how does BOPUS fit into our strategy? In IVROM, there are over 30 general strategies that can be tailored to support a business model and link down to the business processes and people and data necessary to support that strategy. 
In this case, BOPUS covers several of these strategic areas. For this example, we're showing that it relates to the customer area and to our inventory management strategy to make sure we have the inventory and where it's located. We now have the strategy identified. What next? Once we've identified the strategy, we now need to be able to identify the business processes that are tied directly to the strategy. Those processes are called value streams, and they're handled under the area here called business architecture. Business architecture is the way to turn the reference model into a real working model to support an enterprise. It starts with the model of the current enterprise and then allows the creation of the future model of the enterprise and relates the conversion from one to the other. In addition, as noted before, the value streams identified in the business architecture component are tied to the strategy to help focus the effort on those things making the company successful. Continuing around the loop, we come to the business process area. These are the business processes that support the value streams in the, in the previous area. This area was started with a BPM created by ARTS. However, I've added a lot of missing information I've learned from these 1,450 subject matter experts over the last 20 years. The business processes tie the strategy to the process and then on to the people necessary to focus on the strategy. In this case, we're starting off with the manage the sale process. The next item area deals with the key people needed to support the processes to support the strategy. Whew. The business organization ties the people to the processes to support the strategy. It allows the company to focus their efforts on the people who make the strategy work while not forgetting the supporting players. In the BOPIS example, the focus is on those who do the selling. So now we know the strategy. We know the value streams and processes needed to support that. We know the people that need to execute that strategy. And now we get to the information. This is one of the largest areas in the IVRAM model, and it is called enterprise architecture. Oh, boy. This is a view of all of the technology information needed to support the operational side of retail. Again, I started with the list from ARTS and expanded it to include lots of other types of models and data. There's somewhere between 15 and 20,000 attributes in this model. It was created by over 1,450 subject matter experts over 20 years. This means there's a lot of retail knowledge embedded within these models. For example, pause log is one of the most important message schemas in the model. It contains somewhere around 5,000 attributes. It's widely adopted worldwide because of its depth of knowledge. It is basically the lifeblood of retail as it communicates pause information to all the systems that need that information. And what's great, it was architected to be the heart of buy online pickup in the store. One of the reasons retailers fail is not because they have a bad strategy, but they have a poor execution of that strategy. This means that they are either missing a feedback loop to monitor their progress, or they're monitoring the wrong things that don't support their strategy, thus going down a blind alley. The next area of IVRAM is business intelligence. This is about making sure the strategy is being executed according to what the people at the top envisioned. If not, it allows them to change things before it becomes too late. The BI area of the model contains over 150 KPIs to help measure the success of the strategy. To follow the BOPUS example, one set of appropriate KPIs are in the customer group. Thank you for taking this quick look at the IVRAM model. As you can see, it is a very large model. There is a huge amount of information embedded underneath all those headings, and they are all cross-connected. If you'd like to know more about it, please reach out to me at richard.halter at cox.net. Thank you for listening.